God morgon allihopa, idag ska vi prata om Lars. That's the first and probably last time you hear me speak my actual mother tongue on this channel. It's not necessarily the most beautiful language in the world to listen to. Well, it can be, depending on who's using it. But I want to talk about Lars in this video. Now, the uh, actual plan I had for today's video was I was going to sit down and go through all of the characters I think are really weak in the roster and try and come up with a couple of ideas on how you could buff them to make them more viable. And I just arbitrarily started with Lars. And uh, as I was looking through his move list and his frame data, this weird sort of grief just came over me. And I decided that I was going to make the whole video exclusively about Lars. I started remembering all these really cool, very well animated and, and, and amazing moves that he has and thinking about how like I'd forgotten about them because I just never seen Lars anymore. He's like the least used character in the game, or one of them. I play uh, online Tekken a lot, but I think in the high ranks I haven't seen a single Lars in like a month. And it's crazy because he used to be so prolific, and there's so much love and uh, like amazing just aesthetics that have gone into this design that I think he deserves a little bit of a revival. Uh, he was very strong in previous installments of the game, uh, and then people were sort of... Um, annoyed with him because he was simultaneously simple and strong and so in a kangaroo court where I guess Roger Jr. was the judge he was condemned to low tier at jail but I think he's done his time and he deserves uh, to be released at least on probation um, so that we can start experimenting and inventing some new tech. It is true that people seem to base their character choice in Tekken on character viability. It's not true for everybody and I think it's more subconscious than it is conscious, but it is a trend that exists and so I think if you gave him a little bit more power, more people would be willing to give him a shot. Um, I think uh, there are sort of four points that I came up with, uh, four sort of complaints that I have about the design. Or fuck the word complaint, honestly, I don't want this to be a negative video. Let's call it four, four opportunities for improving the design. Um, uh, and I want to bring up sort of my uh, ideas for how you could change those moves. I made a video way back when called Why Lars Doesn't Work, and the point of that w video was sort of explaining why he went from being high tier to low tier between the, the latest two entries in the franchise. But in this one, I want to go into like, actual moves and framed it and talk about how you could make him better right so the four points I want to talk about is first of all I think uh, arc blast is crap and it shouldn't be I think his 10 frame block punishment is crap and it shouldn't be I think his counter hit game is too weak and I think he needs a more reliable loam so let's uh, use those uh, sort of four points as a baseline and talk a little bit about how you could improve this design to make Lars a bit better First of all, Arc Blast. I really want to talk about this because I think this move is uh, kind of crappy right now and it really should be a very good move. And the reason I say that is I think the reason... Lars was uh, designed in the first place as Namco realized that all the poster boys, you know, the uh, protagonist characters of their franchise are these very angry leather jacket wearing dudes who just want to kill each other. Um, and so they probably wanted, you know, a new member of the Mishima clan who felt a little bit more hopeful, like a little bit more of a leader, a little bit more of a, a protagonist that people could get behind. They wanted to make him, uh, you know, simple and easy to use, easy to approach and easy to love, especially for new players and for like younger players players and I think that's a really cool and good idea right uh, but uh, Lars inherited the lightning from his father Heihachi right he's part of the Mishima clan but he doesn't come from Kazumi's lineage so he doesn't have uh, the devil gene he doesn't have that evil stuff in him but he does have the lightning that's the connection he has to the rest of his family and his most iconic move uh, is this arc blast which is his version of Heihachi's demon breath his most powerful launcher and sort of his uh, stand in I suppose for an electric wind god fist or something like that so it's important uh, sort of narratively even if you don't care about the fluff but I think it's important for this uh, move to be a strong move for Lars and currently it is not first of all it has a, a pretty poor range and a range nerf from the previous games so it's not really good for whiff punishment it's punishable at the same frame data as a hop kick but it doesn't have the good range or uh, powerful low crush properties of a hop kick um, even more importantly, if you look at this launcher, this is faster than Arc Blast and the combo leads to more damage. Um, this has longer range than Arc Blast and is safe and leads to more damage. And the Lightning Screw has better range and amazing crush properties unlike the Arc Blast. So if you want to launch your opponent with Lars, you have uh, a lot of launchers. Basically all your launchers are better than Arc Blast and so it doesn't really have a role to fill anymore. It used to be good for like sidestepping into but... 
these days, I mean, uh, you're likely to get blocked, and then you're just going to eat a punish for doing that. So, uh, the two ways I think you could improve Arc Blast and make it a, a better move for Lars is, first of all, give it a big range buff and make it a really long-range powerful launcher. Uh, and what that would allow, to, uh, allow it to do is serve as Lars's go-to with Punisher when he's back dashing and trying to be defensive. Kind of how you'd use an electric with a Mishima, but obviously very different. Um, he would have a go-to powerful with Punisher, and it would be something that he could strategize around. You know, move, keep, uh, stay mobile, back dash, look for the Arc Blast with Punish. And that would mean that the uh, move came more to the forefront of his design and actually saw some use. The other thing that you could do, which is a little bit more out there, but I think it's honestly uh, a pretty viable idea, is to make it safe on block, but then also remove its uh, ability to launch crouchers. And the reason I say that is you have a lot of uh, down for twos, these safe little 15 frame uh, things that for example, uh, Shaheen has a very good version of that. And it's really, really powerful to have a safe mid 15 frame launcher. It's, it's crazy powerful, but one of the ways you balance it out is you make it so that it can't launch crouchers anymore. And maybe it would just, you know, hit them and, and give you a little bit of damage and maybe a, a basic knockdown or something instead. It would be very powerful. It would probably be like it, the most powerful move in its category if you did that to it. But then again, if we're talking about one of the weakest characters in the game and we're talking about his most iconic move needing a serious buff, if there is a move that is going to uh, be allowed to be that powerful, I think Arc Blast is a viable candidate. But I know it's an out there idea and I think the more measured and clever way of improving Arc Blast is just give it a serious uh, range buff and allow it to serve as a more reliable whiff punisher. The next thing I want to talk about is 10 frame block punishment. Uh, Lars is a character who is obviously supposed to specialize in block punishment. He has some of the best stuff in the game. For 12 frames he has this which is great. For pushback moves like uh, uh, Death Fist, he has this, which is amazing. He has a 14 frame launcher, which is very powerful, like really, really good. Uh, but then for his 10 frame, he has like complete crap, like some of the weakest stuff in the game. Um, the reason I think this is so important, and I've talked about this before, is I think that your 10 frame block punishment is like much, much more important than all of your other block punishment combined. I think 10 frame is like the most important thing ever. And the reason for that is that the strongest characters in the game, the characters that you constantly play against when you go online in Tekken these days, they don't really use moves that are minus 12, 13, 14, or 15 all that much at all. They can stay extremely safe and some of them can even apply their offense while staying at plus frames even on block, which is insane, but that's a uh, sort of trend that has been growing in Tekken. Um, another um, important thing about 10 frame block punishment is it's an area that's seen serious power creep in Tekken, which is interesting. But if you look at uh, the characters that have been implemented during Tekken 7, especially the guest characters, Geese has a high-powered 3-hit string for serious damage, Negan has a high-powered 3-hit string for good damage, Noctis has a high-powered 3-hit string for really high damage, um, Akuma and Elisa can DP for a punish and get serious damage, and so most of the new characters that get implemented have extremely strong baselines for 10-frame block punishment, and if you have a specialist in block punishment like Lars and he has like some of the weakest stuff ever you know 1 2 or 2 1 for like 17 or 16 damage and it, they don't really lead to mix ups they don't really transition into stances or anything like that it's really way on the weak side in my opinion and so it's an area where he needs some help it would improve his overall poking game and, and stuff as well and I think that one jab could even use a little bit more range it's not terrible but it's not good either um, so how could you improve this? Well, my idea would honestly be um, like the the most simple way to do it is I, I think they could turn this 1-1-1 into a natural string and just let that be his punishment. Now, 34 damage is very high, and so that would need to see a little bit of a, a damage a nerf. You could maybe uh, put this around, well, somewhere in the range between 27 and 31, which would put it, you know, in line with some of the better stuff in the game. But if you want him to be good at punishment, you want him to be simple and approachable, and a lot of other characters in the game have, you know, three hit jab strings that give them 30 odd damage. I mean, Hey Hodge can do that, and Wall Splat you, so there are definitely more powerful versions in the game. But just giving him a simple, very accessible 1 1 1 for 30 right there, I think would make perfect sense. It would be really cool. Another, another thing that you could do is. 
keep the actual damage of his uh, his typical like jab strings quite low, but then maybe give him the uh, option of transitioning into silent uh, off of one of them. And the reason I say this is silent is like uh, Lars's mix-up stance, and we have a lot of characters in the game who have weak uh, jab strings for their punishment, but then they can actually turn those jab strings into uh, cool extensions or stance transitions that will allow them uh, to mix their opponent up and remain very dangerous. And so even though you don't get great damage, you get an opportunity for great damage off of your 10 frame block punisher. And so an example of that would be 1-1 one, one from Katarina. She has like four different great extensions that complement each other amazingly off of the 1-1 one, one, and she can go into Harrier off of the 1-1. One, one. And so for Lars to be given an option like that or something like that for a 10 frame that would allow you to actually go into you know maybe you get 20 damage and then axe silent that could be a, a a big buff to his mix up game because it would allow you easy access to your mix up stance and it would make your uh, 10 frame block punishment a lot more viable but if you want to have a you know uh, block punishment specialist his jab string can't be this bad and 16 and 17 is really low and the extensions are like you know very iffy you're gonna be able to turn this into a cheeky wall splat once in a blue moon but it's uh, really just too weak in my opinion the next thing I want to talk about is counter hit game it's another area that's seen power creep in Tekken 7 in my opinion really powerful uh, safe counter hit mids are like the name of the game these days uh, and Lars doesn't really have a good go-to counter hit uh, launcher that he can set up. Uh, what he has access to is this 15 frame knee, which has the frame data, animation, and inputs of what would typically be a counter hit launcher in another move list, you know, down forward four from Katarina and moves like that. But what this does when you get the counter hit is it turns into a little attack throw and you get 50 damage uh, and then he puts them on the floor. Now. The easiest way to change uh, this area of Lars would be to just simply take away this little attack throw thing and just turn this into a counter hit launcher. The reason I think that's a little bit sad though, it's a pretty good idea, but this uh, throw right here where he like strangles you and shocks you with lightning at the same time, it's super super cool and it's super dramatic. It would be very sad to have that really cool move uh, or animation just removed from the game. And so if that stays that way, uh, what are some other moves you could maybe give the counter hit launch property um, so that he has a good launcher here? Um, and I think the easiest way to do it would just be to stick counter hit launch properties on this down for two. Lars used to have a very prolific and famous down for 2 counter at launcher in uh, Tekken Tank 2 and it was removed and replaced with this move uh, because they needed to give him uh, a long range reliable spin move which he got in the shape of this down for 2-1. Um, now this is not a great launcher because uh, the second hit is duckable and so you use it mainly for spins But I don't think it's uh, an outlandish idea to stick a counter hit launch property on just uh, just this first elbow right here It looks like a lot of moves that you could use for counter -hit fishing with that uh, sort of animation You know, you go under highs you duck in with a, with a mid like that and you look for the counter hit and then you just adjust the uh, uh, frame data on block accordingly to make it uh, balanced. I think this impacts at uh, 16 as I remember we're, we're gonna double check it right here Yeah, so it's a 16 frame to impact move. It's minus 9 on block You honestly don't even have to change that and you could just allow this to be a counter hit uh, launcher And it would be very similar to stuff like down to from Katarina for example, but there are a lot of moves that uh, fall into that category uh, So I think that would make sense uh, and then you could still use the string for spins uh, by just uh, tacking on the extension. But this down for two by itself could be a good uh, counter at fishing tool. The last idea I have is the very outlandish one, and it's the one where it gets a little bit crazy. And uh, I think this is going to uh, sound insane, but hear me out. You could give counter at launch properties the back one, which would make it absolutely fantastic it would make it one of the best counter hit mids in the entire game maybe you would have to adjust the frame data accordingly to make it more balanced uh, but again if we're talking about buffing one of the weakest areas of one of the weakest characters in the game rather than uh, doing this these minute small adjustments I think it would be more fun to just give him something seriously seriously powerful and then see what happens I can definitely point to moves that would be equally powerful that already exist in the move lists of uh, some of the better characters in the game but this is uh, already a fantastic move it's 
a very long range spin move that you can use for conversions. It's one of the fastest uh, homing mids in the game. It's just a great move overall. And so giving this counter at launch properties on top would be uh, very, very good. But you would obviously have to regulate the combo by, for example, I mean, obviously it would spin on the first hit. Uh, so you would get the spin and the launch baked into that one hit and then you would have to convert your combo and probably end up somewhere between, you know, 55 and 59 damage. Not something uh, too insane, but it could be very, very good. And I mean, the range is, yeah, it would be completely amazing, but maybe Lars deserves to have a single move that is completely amazing. Who knows? Let me know what you think about that. I know it's a little bit of a crazy idea, but I just got the feeling that it could be really cool. Uh, the last area I wanted to talk about was the fact that Lars doesn't really have a uh, reliable uh, low game because this is uh, semi-seeable and launch punishable. It's very good when it doesn't get seen, but when it does, you have to get launched. This is semi-seeable and launch punishable, and this is semi-seeable and launch punishable. And so while you have some powerful stuff here, it's all a little bit balls to the wall. Um, and so uh, what you need is something that is a little bit more pokey, a little bit more safe, a little bit more harassment, maybe leads to good damage every once in a while. And so what they have given him for that is this down back 1-3. Uh, down back 1-3 is cool. I like the fact that you can tack on a little kick and get the 19 right here. It's a pretty cool idea. The problem with the string though is that when you're using a little low poke like this um, and you're trying to harass the opponent, maybe ta rack up a little bit of damage, uh, you're usually talking about something that is going to be like minus 12 and 13 on block. Um, but the fact that this extension is high and duckable means that the opponent can actually uh, launch punish this if they duck under the high. Meaning that you take an unnecessarily uh, large risk when you're trying to apply this poke. And so if you, without like adding new moves to the move list, does he have anything that we could improve or anything that we could give him to serve as a more reliable low risk low for him and I have started thinking about this down three this is a move that you do not see uh, the few Lars players who exist don't really use this much at all it's a move that has been forgotten about and it has this really amazing super cool extension look at that this is like one of the coolest animations in the game like what is he doing and it sort of jerks the opponent around like if he hits somebody in the air with this look what it does kind of tears them and throws them around. It's a super, super cool move, and it doesn't see any use, which is sad. This is not natural, by the way. If we um, turn on all guard here, you can see that Hayaj can block the extension. So my idea for this move, it's a pretty fast low poke. It comes out at 15, which is pretty cool. Uh, would be that you could, um, it's minus 14, I think, on block, which is a little bit too much. So if you improve that a little bit, and then you just make it so, because this is only natural on counter hit, right? But you can't counter it, confirm it, which means the, the extension is just not very useful. What you could do is just make it so that this extension comes out automatically when the low counter hits. Kind of like how the, you know, back four turns into a little bit of an attack throw when you counter hit automatically. And so you could uh, check your opponent with this little low poke. It's uh, useful enough. It's got decent range. You could use it out of a sidestep. It's fast to impact. And then every once in a while you're going to score that counter hit and you're going to get, you know, 20 plus damage. And this really, really cool rare animation that you never get to see anymore uh, actually gets a place in the game. I think that would be a pretty cool way of giving Lars's low game a little bit of a buff. So those are just uh, some of my ideas. I try to get creative, like how could you improve this character? But I mean, look at some of these animations, these like really cool karate punches where he's advancing this like spinning uh, homing move that he has. I mean, his, his combos have always been uh, absolutely beautiful to look at. They're amazing. He has cool stances. He has um, dramatic sound effects and all the rest of it. And uh, while you don't necessarily have to make Lars a very high tier character, I don't think there's any reason for him to be relegated to the bottom tiers like this. Uh, and I really would like to see uh, Lars Renaissance. Mucking around in his uh, move list today just made me very, very excited about, you know, uh, trying to explore the character a little bit and maybe actually uh, trying to get good with Lars, you know, go online and actually try and learn some stuff, uh, which I might do. The only reason I might not is that I'm so balls deep in Elisa right now and trying to get really good with her and she's such a demanding character like you can't casually you know play Elisa every once in a while she's um, really advanced and so uh, if I get tired of Elisa sometime in the next couple of weeks I might honestly just do like a, a little video series on Lars trying to uh, convince more people to give him a shot because I think this is a character design that deserves you know a little bit of love. 
Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was enjoyable. Are there any other characters that you would like to see me give the same treatment to? I mean, obviously Gigas. I might already, you know, have some stuff prepared for that. We'll see what happens. But any other characters? Um, do you have any other ideas of your own on how you can make Lars better? Let me know. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again very soon.